Hello, Algebra 2 students. We're going to be talking today about Section 2.2 on Linear Equations. We're going to focus mainly today on graphing a line and finding the slope of linear equations. And so as we work on our linear equations, we want to understand, first of all, what a linear function is. And very simply, a linear function is on the base word line. And very simply, it's a function whose graph is always going to be a line. And so it's not only a function, which we learned the other day about for every x there is exactly one and only one y, but it's also going to be a line. And this is going to be represented by a linear equation very simply. Now this linear equation, as we're going to learn later in the chapter, can take on many different forms. It could be things like the y-intercept form, the point-slope form, the standard form. You don't need to worry about those right now. We're going to talk about those more at length later in the chapter. But one thing that we do want to remember that a solution to our linear equation is any ordered pair, any ordered pair, comma, you know, x comma y, that makes the equation true. Now, that's kind of our, our basic summary here. As we begin to look at this, we're going to look at two important points on our line. We first have the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is this, this point that's pink, and I'm going to color actually over in red. And then our second point is the x-intercept, and that's the point where it crosses the x-axis. So our x-intercept crosses the x-axis, the y-intercept crosses the y-axis. Now these do have some special characteristics. The y-intercept, if you notice, happens at the point 0, comma, b. So x equals 0 at the y-axis. In contrast, the x-axis happens at the point a comma 0 and y equals 0 at the x-axis. So just some, some comments there as we talk about the y-intercept and the x-intercept. It's where the line crosses those two axes. Now, our first part of today that we're going to do is just graphing a line. And the easiest way to graph a line is by plotting some points. And so I have an example down here, say 3x plus 2. And um, we would choose three values, you know, strategic values, you know, positives, negatives, things like that, things that would cancel out fractions and stuff, to, to plug into our equation. And um, we're going to take have to solve our equation for y to make it into a function style. y, remember that can also be written as f of x. And then we're going to plot our coordinates and just draw our line. So our first equation is 4 thirds x plus 2. Now, best point always to choose, I think, is 0. Now, our function here is 4 thirds x plus 2. So we're going to put in 4 thirds times 0 plus 2. And obviously, that gives us a result of 2. And so I'm going to plot that point 0, comma, 2. Not only is it our first point, but our first point also happens to be the y-intercept. OK, our second point, I'm going to choose a multiple of 3. And when I talk about choosing our points strategically, that's what I'm talking about. Because if I choose a multiple of 3, then 4 thirds of 3 plus 2 will end up being a number that's not a fraction. The 3's cancel out, and I'm left with 4, four plus 2, which is 6. And so my second point is 3, comma, 6. And so I'm going to plot that point, 4, 5, 6. Did I get that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 5, I'm sorry. 4, 5, 6. All right. Our third point. I'd like to also have a multiple of 3, so I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to go negative 3. So 4 thirds times negative 3 plus 2. The 3's cancel out. That leaves me with negative 4 plus 2 or negative 2. So my third point is 3, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, negative 2. So here I've got three points, and now I can easily draw my line through my points. So I'm going to sketch my line as accurate as I can through my points, realizing that my y-intercept is negative 2. When we graph a line, I am going to want to have you make sure you have an arrow at each end of your line, and the line's extending all the way through our problem. Let's look at our second equation. Here we have the equation 2y plus 4x equals 6. Now, a difference on this problem is, first of all, it's not written in the form y equals mx plus b. And so it would sure be nice to have that form y equals mx plus b. So to do that, let's just kind of think through here. 
Let's subtract 4x from both sides. That gives me 2y equals negative 4x plus 6. I'm going to bring this up here. 2y equals negative 4x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. Notice I divided all three parts by 2, giving me negative 2x plus 3 as my equation. So that's going to be my function, negative 2x plus 3. My first point, I'm going to choose once again 0. So negative 2 times 0 plus 3. Well, that gives me 3 and the point 0, 3. So there we have the point 0, 3. My second point, since I don't have fractions, I'm going to choose 1. So negative 2 times 1 plus 3. That's negative 2 plus 3, or 1. So that's the point 1 comma 1. My third point I'm going to choose is 2, because it seems like points seem to be on the graph pretty straightforward. So negative 2 times 2 plus 3. That's negative 4 plus 3, or negative 1. So my third point is 2, negative 1. I hope you can see we have a pattern going on here. Every time we are working on our problem, we're going down 2 and over 1. And so I'm going to continue that pattern of down 2 over 1. So down 2 over 1, and I'm going to put some extending points, finishing my points in this way, going down 2 over 1 each time. Now on the other side, I'm going to go up 2 and back 1 to continue my graph until it's off the screen. And that allows me to really sketch this graph fairly accurately from edge of the graph to edge of the graph. And so here we have the graph, y equals negative 2x plus 3, or as we originally wrote, wrote 2y plus 4x equals 6. I do want you to graph at least three points on your graphs tonight, and if possible, see the pattern and extend it to the edges of the graph. Our third equation is y plus 3 equals negative 2x. Now this looks very similar to our last one, so let's take this and get the y by itself. So when we subtract 3 from both sides, we get negative 2x minus 3. Well, like before, let's plug in our values of 0. So negative 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So that's the point 0, negative 3. Do you remember what the point is called when it crosses the y-axis? I hope you do. That is called the y-intercept. All right, we're going to try the point 1. Next, negative 2 times 1 minus 3. That gives me negative 2 minus 3, or negative 5. So that's the point 1, negative 5. My third point, it seems like I'm going down. So that negative 1, uh, negative 5 is, uh, or positive 1, negative 5 is down here. And it seems like I'm, I'm seemingly going down in this direction. I might be able to fit one more point on. So I'm going to try the point 2, so negative 2 times 2 minus 3. That's negative 4 minus 3, or negative 7. So that's the point 2, negative 7. And I did barely fit it on my graph, and there's my third point down there in blue. Now, if you notice our slope, it seems like it's down 2 over 1. So I'm going to continue this pattern backwards and go up 2 over 1 to allow myself to have a continuous line on my graph with my little red dots there as I work through the problem. Realizing the pattern just has to follow that 2 over 1 pattern in order to get a consistent line all the way through. And as you're kind of working on your surfaces here, just try to get your lines so they're as close as you possibly can through those intersection points. All right, so that's just how to graph some basic lines with using three points for each one and then kind of continuing that pattern as we go. Perhaps if we had gone back to this one, we would have seen the pattern was a slope of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So perhaps my point was a little bit off, and it could have been better drawn like so. All right, let's look at our second part of our lesson for today. I've alluded to the idea of slope a couple times already, and the slope of a line talks about the different ideas of the vertical change over the horizontal change or the rise over the run. Rise over run is most commonly referred to in terms of the words we talk about slope. The rise you know, refers to the y values. The run refers to the x values. And most traditionally, the slope is used with this equation here on our left. 
with is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, some people have asked, where does these numbers come from? Well, it comes from our points, and our first point would be x1, comma, y1, and our second point would be x2, comma, y2. And so just remember that as we're talking about our slope, we're often going to use this equation to work that out. Now remember, slope also could be thought of as change of y over change of x. Those are Greek symbols and very usually referred to with the little letter m. So I have a couple examples down here with slope. Let's take a look at them. Our first one is negative 2, 1, and 5, 7. So I'm going to label this x1, y1, x2, and y2. I find if I label the points, it allows me really to have a better clear understanding of which is which and how to use my equation up here of slope. So let's work this out. x2 is 5 minus x1 is negative 2 divided by y2 is 7 minus y1 is 1. That gives me a slope of 5 plus 2, or 7, over 6. Let's look over here at example 5. Once again, I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, and y2. Let's find our slope here. m equals 8, which is x2, minus 6, which is y1, divided by 4, which is x2, minus 2, which is x1. That gives us a slope of 2 over 2, or simply a slope of 1. Let's look down here at example 6. Once again, let's label x1, y1, x2, y2, and let's work out the slope. M equals negative 6 minus 7 divided by 8 minus negative 2. So M equals negative 13 over 10. In each case, our negatives are in the numerator, and the denominator is always going to be a positive number. Let's look at example 7. Once again, x1, y1, x2, y2. As we compute our slope, m equals 3 minus 3 divided by 4 minus 1. That gives us a slope of 0 over 3, or a slope of 0. Now, this is a special situation, and for this case, I just want you to realize the fact that a slope of 0 is a horizontal line. So whenever you see an equation with a slope of 0, know that that line is going to be a horizontal line. Let's look at example 6. Once again, let's label x1, y1, x2, y2. Our slope here, we have negative 1 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 4. That gives us a slope of negative 3 divided by 0. Well, you can't divide negative 3 by 0, and so we call this slope undefined. But since slope represents points, we have to understand that whenever we get an undefined slope, that has actual special meaning. And an undefined slope indicates that we have a vertical line. Okay, so let's take a look at our slope and, and summary here. Back up at the top, we idealized and talked about the most ideal equation for slope being y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the fact that we want to label our points when we're working with slope. We have a couple different examples of slope here, being the slope being 7 over 6, positive 1, 
negative 13 over 10, 0, and undefined. In each of these cases, I just want to do some quick sketches for you. A slope of 7 over 6 means it's going to go up 7 and over 6. So our slope is something about that dotted line. A slope of 1 is going to go up 1 and over 1, a perfect 45 degree angle. A slope of 13 over 10 is going to go down 13 and over 10. So it's going to be a downward slope, something like that. A slope of 0 we've talked about being a horizontal line, and a slope that's undefined we talked about being a vertical line. So there's just kind of some examples of what the angles of slopes look like as we're thinking about how those numbers relate. I hope you realize that each time we rose up was a positive, and each time we went on the run, it was also a positive. But negatives on the vertical caused us to go down and over. We're going to do more of this as we continue to graph throughout the chapter and go from there. Our homework tonight is section 2.2, page 67, 1 through 8, all, and 11 through 19, all.